This week on BCC The Other Side, a Funny Feelings Marcy Jarro returns to the podcast to discuss all things teenage witchery. It's a fun-filled, spooky, nostalgic trip featuring a Ouija boards, Bloody Mary, and light as a feather, stiff as a board. To subscribe, go to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. It's Bigfoot Collectors Club with Bryce and Michael. <laughs> I know a ghost story or two. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome to the Bigfoot Collectors Club, the St. Paddy's Day celebration. I'm your host. Michael Macmillan. With me always is your other host, Sober Bryce Johnson. And our super producer, Roy Libre. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to an all new episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of hoy strangeness. Uh, guys. I was kind of hoping we could do the. Oh, wow. I lo- lost it there. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I am all over the place. Right? Listen, You're Australian. Uh, oh, just, a, just a heads up. We're going to do some bad Irish accents probably in this <laughs> entire episode. So, uh, you know, I took dialect classes back in college. It's been a long time. So just bear with us. I remember last time I tried to do an Irish accent on, on my Instagram. Everybody yelled at me. All the Irish people sure. said, what the fuck is that? The and f- then... People, I think, people from like a western part of England were like, "That's you sound like us. That's that's what you sound like." I think it helps me if I just picture Colin Farrell. Yeah, if you just picture his bod. If I picture Colin shirtless, I can do it better. Shirtless, 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 shirtless. The phrase that used to always get me into it was the hoy to the fire, the hoy to the, the hoy to the fire. <laughs> that's a good one. The well. Hoy to the fire. The way to the fire. Guys, it's St. Paddy's Day. Uh, we're going to get into a very special St. Patrick's Day mascot. It, it's okay. just the look of the Irish that <laughs> really have to stop. We'll stop. <laughs> but it is uh, it's it's fun. I've been waiting for a Wednesday to fall on St. Patrick's Day. So we could, of course, do leprechauns which is what we're going to get into it's it's going to be a fun little breezy saint patty's day episode so hey you know what if you're celebrating at home today if you want to i've got a guinness next to me and my uh my etched guinness glass with my name on it if you want to kick back with some irish whiskey or some irish breakfast tea if you're a non-drinker or just a boring glass of water feel free but Let's make it a little bit of a celebration. Why not, boys, right? Sure. Yeah, get the spirit. Mm-hmm. Here, here. And to celebrate, we, of course, have one of our favorite guests. She's a sister to the show. She's uh, a writer on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She's a podcaster with multiple different podcasts. I mean, this lady does... Uh, let me see if I can name them all. Cardition It. Uh, she does A Funny Feeling. She does 90 Day Bay on uh patreon uh, club scouts of america and the world please welcome to the show miss marcy jaro yeah hi i was gonna do an accent but then i was like it's gonna come out jamaican it's gonna come out jamaican <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best of us uh it's where it always ends up even if i don't start there <laughs> it's it, it's sad that no matter how americans try to shake it <laughs> Even if they're doing accents of other white people, they're just always offensive. Well, you know, it's all colonialism, guys. So not our fault. Not our fault. Totally. <laughs> it's the height of the fire. Eh? Also, the height of the fire. The I want to say I worked on a movie as a PA with Colin Farrell, and he never wears a shirt when he doesn't have to. Oh, good. As he shouldn't. What? Yeah, no, I would you mean? expect nothing less. I so I was in. Wait, wait, 
wait, Starbucks. Wait, wait, I need to hear oh. this real quick. What okay. do you mean, Marcy? Okay. Well, just like when he's walking around, all of a sudden that shirt's unbuttoned or it's off, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it, and we, it was winter in Joshua Tree. <laughs> no, no, we were in Lancaster, but we were in the high desert. It, it was, was 17 degrees. It was very cold. He's got a reputation to uphold. You're talking to a man who <clears throat> swam with his shirt on until he was at least 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so funny i was in uh i was in starbucks and 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 colin stepped in and, and man it, the air sucked out of the starbucks he really does have uh that star quality-esque about him would you agree marcy absolutely and he's so nice yeah. he's a friendly friendly guy um smartest person no but very nice and handsome god's not giving you two scoops of everything so no, it works no. out that way why should he and he's good i mean if you've seen in bruges that guy is great in that movie yeah i worked on a martin mcdonough film with him so oh. uh, it was seven psychopaths oh, oh yeah i need yeah. to see that what, so what did you do on it i was the producer's assistant like mm. the executive producer's assistant so um, I just did. I got yelled at by her a lot, and then just <laughs> hung out. I was I had the biggest crush on his assistant slash bodyguard Ante, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I just shoot the shit with Ante. Well, whatever amazing. happened between you and Ante? You know, I believe he had a fiance and smelled like fish oil. It didn't go far, but <laughs> Woody Harrelson was in that movie as well. And on my 30th birthday, we were in Joshua Tree and he uh, bought uh, bought us all drinks and dinner because they were like trash at the, the only restaurant around open. So we we had a good old time. And then he Love said, that. you know, he doesn't he's like very green, so he doesn't use heat. And he was like, oh, I sure could use someone like you to cuddle with tonight. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Woody Harrelson's very green. He doesn't use heat. What, is yeah, that... like in his like he won't let you run any of the transpo vans while he's on set. He no. doesn't. Right. He has a diesel van that's like a big like a big diesel like motorhome or something instead of a trailer because he th won't use gasoline solar powered cameras movie cameras yes <laughs> yes he can't does shoot as, at night tonight guys <laughs> he does as much as he can to like offset you know the footprint of a film production that's cool can't that's fault awesome. him for that does and he have a, a battery operated lighter for his famous spliffs I mean, I think he's just hitting two stones together, but he can do it so cool. He does it right on the end of his joint as soon as he's wrapped for the day. Oh, I was that. hoping that he rolled you a birthday joint and like you and he just like blazed together and watched the sun go down in Joshua Tree. If I had asked him, he would have definitely done it. He's the coolest guy he he just is like here to chat and see if you want to eat some vegan food with him. <laughs> That's amazing. I remember I was on a boat one time and with with my buddies and and our we ran out of and Woody Harrelson swam up and <laughs> no, that sucked cool. the life out of the boat. <laughs> but we were trying to light this joint and, I, and we didn't have a a lighter and I was like here give me those binoculars and within <gasps> seconds I just used the lenses to to flare that doobie right up. Oh, you're so weed MacGyver. MacGyver. Oh, I was totally, it was a total weed MacGyver moment. So yep. badass. It, it was pretty sweet. That's the pair of binoculars you get when you become a VIP member of Club Bryce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These not only can look far, but they light doobies too. <laughs> if you're ever in a boat, bro, these will come in real handy. And it's actually a monocular because the other one is really a flask. <laughs> sick. That is totally sick. Uh, well, I want to catch up with Marcy, but before we do that, Riley, I think Bryce and I have some. BCC News! Oh, man, you should little... have seen my face. <laughs> a little whinny at the end of that. <laughs> it was a real horse at the end of it. <laughs> hey, guys, what if what if you could come back? Popular <laughs> Mechanics. Have, uh, that was, I can um, imagine, like, tuning into the evening news and that's the opening. <laughs> guys, what if you could come back? Oh. <laughs> 
Popular Mechanics released an article today by Stav Dimitriopoulos. A <laughs> Dyson sphere could bring humans back from the dead. Researchers uh-huh. say this cosmic megastructure may be the key to resurrection and immortality. Imagine this. In the far, far future, long after you've died, you'll eventually come back to life. So will everyone else who have ever had a hand in history of human civilization. But in this scenario, returning from the dead is the relatively normal part. The journey home will be a hell of a lot weirder than the destination. Here's how it'll go down. A megastructure called a Dyson Sphere will provide a superintelligent artificial agent, AI, with the enormous amount of power it needs to collect as much historical and personal data about you so it can rebuild your exact digital copy. Once it's finished, you'll live your whole life again in a simulated reality. (gasps) And when the time comes for you to die (laughs) again, you'll be transported into a simulated afterlife, a la Black Mirror's San Junipero, where you'll get to hang out with your friends, family, and favorite celebrities forever. Yes, this is mind-boggling, but someday it might also be very real. This is Plan C of the Immortality Roadmap, a project on which Russian transhumanist and life extensionist Alexei Turchin has been working since 2014. Turchin recently laid out the details in a paper he published with fellow transhumanist Maxim Chernikov called Classification of Approaches to Technological Resurrection. Plans A, B, and D involve life extension, cryonics, and quantum immortality, respectively. You can find arguments justifying how each can lead to immortality in the paper. When Turchin was 11 years old, a girl in his class died. The experience planted the first seeds of the possibility of eternal life in his young mind. Quote, I started to think in science fiction terms about what could be done, Turchin tells Pop Mech. In, 20, in 2007, he became a member of the Russian transhumanist movement, a community that works to prepare Russians to embrace the technologies that will help them transcend their current physical and mental limitations. Turchin co-founded Russian's first transhumanist pop political party in 2012, and for the last few years, he's been perfecting his immortality roadmap and proactively recording every tidbit of his life. Turchin is recording and keeping diaries of every dream, conversation, and daily experience he has. This practice of ubiquitous surveillance throughout which Turchin says he even records his own biases is necessary because the superintelligent AI needs to subject future resurrectees to the exact same developmental conditions they went through when they lived for the sake of their authenticity, he says. Once the AI creates your precise digital copy, anything is possible, even Restoration to biological life, says Turchin. The AI will doggedly search for your DNA. It will even dig up your grave because only then will it be able to create a clone of your exact physical body wherein your digital copy will find its temple. It's going to dig it all the way through. Wow. Nice work. Weird Russian accent, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Whoa. Wow. Uh, But yeah, that's pretty trippy, right? Do you guys know what a Dyson sphere is? I mean, it sounds like a a giant space vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to assume it's one of their new products lines because they have vacuums and hair dryers. So maybe they have (laughs) spears, too. Well, a Dyson Sphere was named after, uh, uh, who was it? Dyson's, oh, where is it? Uh, The megastructure is usually conceived of a... So a Dyson sphere is a megastructure conceived a gigantic Freeman shell Dyson. He's a mathematician and you. physicist. Yes. This is it, a type three civilization, right? That's what yes, we're talking about. It's a about. gigantic shell that encloses the sun lined with mirrors or solar panels, solar panels, and is designed to collect every iota of a star's energetic output. Yeah, they think that some of these might be used to power like the simulation machines that are all all the simulations that are running us. That we're all living in right now, that are, you know, we're actually in the far future, uh, yeah. living now in it's a the batteries Dyson's, to the matrix. Yeah, it's just ba- basically a matrix battery, exactly. And they think they've seen like, I remember a story a few years ago where, you know, it was one of those like uh, Amo Mao uh, stories where they're like, there's some weird megastructure out in deep space that could be a Dyson sphere encircling a, su- a sun or a star, mm-hmm. you know. So um, there are these giant, uh, yeah, giant solar batteries that encapsulate an entire star. 
Jeez. No. What do you think of that, Marcy? Would you want to come back as a no. digital template? <laughs> I was just about to ask you, does he say anywhere why? <laughs> Yeah, great, great question, right? Well, I mean, people have been trying to transcend death since the, you know, since the beginning of consciousness. So I think this is just another way of like, and it's another article kind of bolstering the idea that perhaps we may be living in some sort of simulated reality. I don't oh. know. I mean, more and more of these articles are coming out that are saying like, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do in the future. So why couldn't that already be happening and taking place now? Right. Ugh. The idea, I'm, Marcy, is that I'm unhappy about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the idea, Marcy, being that like if simulations are possible, we did a whole episode about this, and it's possible to simulate life in a computer that would take a lot of power to run millions and millions of simulations. Uh, then, if that's likely to happen, and people are likely to do that, and that we won't have destroyed ourselves in order to make that happen, so we avoid like nuclear holocaust then the chances are, the odds are that that's already happened and we're already living in a simulation now. Yeah. Got it. Well, my friend did ayahuasca and that's what she figured out on her trip. Oh, Whoa. really? Yeah. Confirmed. She, she was just I, like... I love that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> she was I just like, oh shit, there's like, it's like uh, everything was like a grid system and they were like overlords and she was having a bad time and she was freaking out and so she told her like guide... She was like, I'm I'm fucked up. And then she's like, all of a sudden, a big falcon came and I got on the falcon's back. And oh, or, that's so cool. Oh, it was a condor. It was a condor. She got on the condor's back and then and then flew away from that scary reality. And then later found out a condor is his spirit animal. Wow. Whoa. Ooh. But also that's he was awesome. like, yeah, people see that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's no fun. <laughs> but I would like to opt out if that's a thing. And I'm going to just put it on the record here. So I don't know where I need to like do that. But I am opting out. I don't like that. I think people who want to live forever, like an extreme version of like narcissism. I don't understand it. Mm, yeah. Well, like, what I think you you're good. Do? The AI will hear this podcast. Yeah, and, yeah. And exactly. This is the point good. where the AI gives up and then they go, my, <laughs> my purpose is meaningless. So they self destruct. So you just killed a robot. You just and all life, actually. Yes. So. I killed Good myself, job. I think. <laughs> I'm going to echo your statement and go with hard pass on this nightmare consciousness prison. Well, this is like, aren't no I thing. doing enough now? Like, is, right? what else yeah. do I, what must I give? You know? Yeah. You know, and like, if you're going to bring me back, like, why do I have to be me again? Yeah. Like, I want to be able to like fly, maybe. I, I don't know. Or just be someone else. Like, I, I think, don't want to do this again. You know, this is why a lot of these sort of ancient religions and customs and cultures, you know, bury the bones of their dead. And, and, and stuff like cremation is sort of frowned upon in certain societies and sects because the idea is that one day, someday, you know, we will be able to take those bones and piece back together their life, you know? Um, I know even like, uh, you know, the ancient Egyptians felt that that same way, you know, they 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 that's the whole process of mummification was was con you're going you know, to need that body in the afterlife. You're going to need that body in the afterlife. And so mm -hmm. the idea kind of holds that, you know, it, it's also an extension of maybe somewhere down the road, somebody can pull some DNA from one of your bones and resurrect you. Uh, yeah. My wife's got me signed up for cremation, so there's not much I can do. But, <laughs> well, but I, she, I'm saying, she, yeah, she's like, I said, till death do us part, and I fucking mean it. <laughs> not till Dyson burn Sphere does you us part. two cinders, my friend. <laughs> you will be ashes in the palm of my hands when this is done. Wait, there's something really big is happening for me. What's the opposite of an existential crisis? Like a resolution? I just yeah. had an existential resolution then, <laughs> oh, yeah. which is. I'm not an atheist. I, I do believe in an afterlife. But if I die and there's not one and I just have a final death, I think this made me decide I'm all right with that. Totally. <laughs> wow. I right always. On. Yeah. Why See not? See what right? happens always... when you actually finish a news story, Bryce. People like get <laughs> You're changing lives. Yes. Yeah. So that's how that works. OK. Yeah. Right, cool. <laughs> My question is this when I like. What if something like this gets in the way of the real deal? You know what I mean? Mm. What if it's a premature ejaculation of of a sort where it's like, yeah, 
hey, no, 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 just die because the good shit is going to happen to you. There is an afterlife. There is a way to move on. But if you sign up for this like weird AI thing, it actually interrupts what will naturally take place you know and you're just stuck in this like sort of like shitty glitchy afterlife yeah. for eternity when you this when you one, could be this, in like it's this reality guys it's yes, what we're yes. in right now yeah what yeah. we're here that's the thing is like well it wouldn't be you it would be a, a clone of you right so it's well, like mo- it. it's like I that movie with it. michael keaton and like with multiplicity you know I want each some one was dumb a little Marcy bit different. suffering come on <laughs> <laughs> that is the price. That's it, though. That's the fundamental problem with all of these ideas is that a copy uh, of like digital consciousness in general, because like a copy of you is not fundamentally no. you, yeah, even right? if it's exactly the same and it has all of your memories and it is you down to the DNA. Yeah. It's and, still not you. Yeah, those and are multi- twins. Multiplicity right, taught us exactly. that it's just going to end up eating paint because it doesn't know better. <laughs> Exactly. Right. I'm the one That's guy science. who saw that movie and remembered it. <laughs> no, we I, I, all I remember it. That. Yeah. <laughs> we all got it. I truly am like, I need people to like hit me up on the internet and tell me why would you want to do this? I can't I my brain can't comprehend it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Exactly. People are scared of nothing. That's why. People are scared of lights out. You know, when when to me, that sounds like a beautiful thing. That's why I've always thought that death was a win win. I mean, if there's something great, if not yeah. fucking great, you know, I'll yeah, take you, both. You cannot be sad if there's nothing after this. No, yeah. that's exactly right. I kind of got through that existential crisis when I was like, oh, I just go back to being if, if there's no afterlife, I just go back to being whatever it was before I was born, yeah. which was like, fine. You know what I mean? I didn't suffer f- for like millennia. I yeah. was just didn't exist. That was great. Um, and I do think that like I'm at the age now where the older I get. If I make it to like 99, I will be like, thank you. It's time to die. I'm ready for this. You know, I do think barring tragedy, there does come a point where you do, you know, embrace death and you're just like, bring it on, dude. I've done it. I'm ready to go. Yes, I could see that this is not something an individual would want for themselves so much as someone would want for a loved one who they miss. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you're right about that too, you know. But also this just is- if anyone I know loves me is listening, don't do this to me. <laughs> I don't want it. Oh man, cut to that robot digging up your grave in <laughs> 2178. Um Marcy, how are you? How have you been? You know, all things considered, uh pretty great, I think. I think Uh, you're here uh, on the one year anniversary of, we talked about it last week, but now I think uh, it's officially a year of being at stay at home uh, during the pandemic for, for most of us. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, But uh, you know, I'm a real testament to therapy and medication, so I'm doing all right. (laughs) Good. (laughs) I think I'm doing better than most people and I apologize for it, but. Isn't that funny now? Like you kind of feel bad when you're in a good mood. (laughs) Well, I was already used to a semi-depressive state. So like that doesn't really bring me down. That's like my baseline. And then like with my Wellbutrin and therapy, I'm like, I think I'm all right, guys. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good place to be. Any, uh, and you know, you've been on the show a couple times now. We've hosted a show together, a live show together, which was really fun before the pandemic hit. Hopefully we'll do it again. Um, but have you had any new or weird things you can't explain? Um, you know, a lot of people are saying they're having more ghostly experiences now that they're home alone all day. I, you know, I, I'm not going to say I wish, but that has not been the case. But I did have a really cool session with a medium great, where Mm. there were some very interesting things that came up in it. And one of them was my grandmother was talking and he was like, she's saying that like there's a is there a room in your house that doesn't have like window coverings? I was like. Oh, yeah, because since the pandemic started, I've now live alone, but I used to have roommates. So but so in one of the rooms that's empty, there's nothing in there except for storage shit. And so he was like, she's saying to cover that because she's really worried about people like looking in. 
She oh, doesn't want wow. people to look in. <laughs> and then <laughs> two nights later, I had a fucking prowler in my backyard that wow. like I ca- I Whoa. caught him like on like, my video camera and like I saw him like leaving and I was like that was really weird. And then I was like telling my mom about it, but also about the mediumship and she's like your grandmother always said that that was one of her biggest fears was people looking in the windows at her That's whoa good. so it was wow. just like very validating and also being like was it about that i don't know um so what was what made you want to go see the medium in the first place if you don't mind my asking i uh, just you know i got a lot of time in my days uh right right, right. <laughs> i love it i mean those are some pretty confirming hits and i mean he had a lot of things like he started talking about my uncle and the way he spoke he was like the k he had the cadence down he's like yeah. he's talking like this and i was like that is so accurate wow. so just like interesting little things that you know nothing that like knocked me on my ass but i was like oh this is pretty cool i don't really have a lot of unresolved issues with any of my dead family so it's all Fine. All those family members are still alive and you're not speaking to them. Yeah. If we are getting along, uh, your ass is toast. <laughs> like you want to stay in a little bit of chaos with me <laughs> if you want to live. Wow. Are you always pretty open to the idea of a medium or do you sort of like keep like a, a, a secret password in your pot in your back pocket to like try and like, just to make sure they're, you know, they can capture something that only, you know, a, a real medium would know. Like, are, in other words, do you do you sort of bring a, a a little bit of a skeptical outlook with you, or are you pretty just like, okay, what have you got for me? I always believe I'm very open, but mm. more often than not, I walk away being like, I don't know about all that. Right. But I think of any kind of psychic or medium, like any therapeutic doctor or whomever you go to, that if you don't tell them. Like if you make them try to guess what's 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 wrong or what you want to discuss, then like good luck. Like that's a great way to look at it. You go to a doctor. How are we feeling today? I don't know. You, you tell, tell me, me. exactly. <laughs> well, you're the doctor. Yeah. You're the one with all the framed diplomas on the wall, buddy. <laughs> but I mean, some. Are you really look- <laughs> a doctor? Let's find uh, out. Because my knee hurt. You didn't say anything about it. Uh, but you know, sometimes it will tell you not to tell them anything. Yeah. So you yeah. know, it just depends. But I've definitely had some where I'm like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. But right. I just go along with it. Let's be polite. You know, it's like um, I think of it as like getting a massage, it's something in yeah. the moment that's like interesting and relaxing. But it does. I don't need anything after it. Wow, that's wild. You're pretty sensitive, aren't you? Do you get you get psychical visions, don't you, Marcy? I you know, I I I I'm pretty intuitive, but I don't know if that's like me being psychic or growing up in a family with a lot of narcissists. So mm-hmm. it's hard to know. <laughs> so hard Apparently to know. a lot of people who are empaths usually have some people that they were trying to not upset when they were little. <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. Checks out. Yeah, well, I'm disappointed that you haven't seen a ghost this year. I mean, I'm sure you're relieved, but I was just so you know, I'm hoping that one of us sitting around in our houses all all year long are gonna see something, and I haven't had anything. I will mm. say that when I have my reading, my mom always gets the ghost after I do something. So did Grandma come see her? It was my aunt, I believe. But whoa, oh, your but, aunt. Yeah, anytime that I do something, my mom, like even if I don't tell her, I'll hear a story within the week about something happening at the house. Can you mm. think of a specific <clears throat> one? The last one was that my mom was taking a bath and my dad had walked into their bathroom, but he and then, then left. And she was like, did you leave the, like she heard water running. And so she called after him. Did you leave? Did you turn the water on and leave it running? Like of the sink that's the, there's two vanities, so there's one sink near the door and then one sink further into. The and if you're in the bathtub, you can't see these sinks. I'm. It was presuming. right, but it would have been behind where she was, you know, seated in the bathtub. Yeah. And he was like, "No, I didn't turn the sink on at all." And she's like, "It was on full, like on, like not like we left it on. It was like all the way turned on full, <laughs> like full mm. blast." And, that's wild. And I mean, unless they. You know they're they're getting older, so maybe they're crazy. But 
She has a you lot know, of little things like that. You, 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 you guys might not believe this, but I was talking to, I don't know, Don and I were having a conversation the other day. And so my wife's very skeptical about all this stuff. And I don't know how it came up, but she was like, and she was a little hesitant to say it. She's like, I don't know. Sometimes when I'm having a nap, I feel like I feel something sort of sit or lay next to me and it's not there. And I was like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? And she sort of hesitantly went on to say that like once or twice, she's felt like an impression on the bed and she was like, you know, and she would look there and there's nothing there, you know? Wow. Very strange. Night, night terror, nap terrors, nap terror. Yeah. Someone's trying to move in on your girl, man. I know, man. <laughs> I know. I put a camera up in there. She's like, I don't know who. It's just some. It's an invisible person. I don't know what you're talking about, honey. <laughs> Colin Farrell just strutting in with his shirt half unbuttoned. I just Woody, don't wear shirts Woody, all the time. He's like, we're just having a laugh. That's all. Just having a laugh. <laughs> a Woody laugh, Harrelson like... crawls out from under the bed where he was keeping warm. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Colin Farrell would say if he was cheating on you with his with your girl. It's just having laughs, just, just taking the laughs. piss. <laughs> just... That's what he. That's what he said about Britney Spears. Oh, oh no, way. that's right. right. Oh. Man, I'm on Team Britney now, so now I'm a little upset at Colin. No, he j- <laughs> no. They were just he didn't do just having a wrong, laugh, guys. Oh, just having yeah. okay. All right, all right. Just cool. having a laugh. We're just having okay. a laugh. <laughs> Uh, Marcy, it's St. Patrick's Day. Do you have any St. Patty's memories that come to mind? Oh, boy. It's very funny. Earlier, Michael, you asked, you, I think you assumed I was Irish because of my fair, fair skin. <laughs> no. I did. First of all, I know that you're French because of Jaro, but I thought your other side, like I'm, I'm French. Scottish and English. I thought that you had Irish, maybe because now I'm I'm really treading into mistake uh, into a landmine here. But <laughs> your family's Catholic, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so I think maybe I was confusing Catholic with Irish Catholic background. So I thought the other half of your family was Irish. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're, I think it. we're all like French and English as hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of Brits. Um, but let's see, what is my I I think the so in Louisiana around this time of year we're like let's have a parade for everything. That's what so, I wanted to know because you're from <laughs> New Orleans and Mardi Gras is a big thing, but because St. Patty's Day falls uh, during Lent, well, do you, does 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 New Orleans get into St. Patrick's Day? Because sometimes Mardi Gras could happen after, like it's a sliding, you get know, out of the town. Uh, I don't know if it, I actually don't know if it would happen after Fat Tuesday happening after Irish Wednesday or whatever. <laughs> that, well, I guess it's, it just floats. It's you know, because, yeah, it's like uh, they do some other kind of Catholic calendar or whatever. But uh, they do have parades. And that's how you can tell people are not keeping their their Lent. Uh, that's what I <laughs> wanted to know. You're answering all my questions. I love this. Yeah, but yeah, they have parades and I can, I'm trying to remember, but it's just like this, it's like whatever the leftover beads are from Mardi Gras, but they pick out the yellow, the gold and the purple and they're like, okay, we got the green. Uh, And sometimes they do kind of combine that with Mardi Gras that they're, you know, depending on how close it is, try to like lump it all in. And so it's just people like, I don't even know that Louisiana has a very large Irish population. I think that's actually not true at all. So (laughs) it's just like being like, why can we drink today? Let's <laughs> yeah. figure it Is out, there guys. A Christian holiday anchored towards drinking a lot that we can get into. Yeah. So I think most of my actual like St. Patty's Day stuff happened when I was in New York, when it was just a terror, like terrorizing <laughs> thing to be in the city on that day. <laughs> so do you guys know what St. Patrick's Day is about generally? Because to me, it's always been like a, I always tend to associate, even though, yes, there are those like, I was never a like big St. Patty's Day pub crawler or anything. So I still associate the holiday with like making crafts in elementary school. You know what I mean? <laughs> like right. that's and, and I kind of like it that it hasn't become so commercialized that like, you know, you're getting a St. Patrick's Day um section up at target like in november you know what i mean right. it, it tends to be pretty low-key other than just people going out and drinking and being idiots and um, pinching they pinch you 
and they pinched. Yeah. That was pinched the big thing. If you weren't green, yeah. Yeah, if you didn't wear green, you got pinched. I'm wearing green right now uh, for this recording. Um, but so basically, do, do do any of you guys know? I did a little research on the on on the origins of St. Patrick's Day. Do you guys? I'd want like to-, to take a stab at it. Okay. So didn't Patrick's St. Patrick round up all the snakes in Ireland and banish them? I'm gonna second that. And it became known as St. Patrick's Day. You're, yes, but on a very basic level, yes. Basically, okay. St. Patrick's Day comes from the feast of St. Patrick. St. Patrick was famous for uh, bringing Christianity to Ireland and Christianizing the pagan tribes, the old mm. Celts and pagan tribes, a.k.a. i.e., running the snakes out of Ireland. Got it. Wow. That's really wow. what the symbol stands That's for. Is like sick. That's get, sick. Yeah, getting rid of the old ways and bringing in Christianity. So and, it, and then he would use the, the shamrock, um, not the four-leaf clover, but the shamrock with three leaves became associated with the holiday um, because it represented, apparently that was like he'd hold up a shamrock and teach pagans like, the Holy Trinity. It's like this shamrock. You got the oh, right. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that became sort of a Christian symbol. <clears throat> Three in one, sure. Right, you, right. But how would you convince a pagan to become Christian? It seems so with your hard. sword. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. Without <laughs> yeah. trying without actually killing people, there's no way. Because it's not a it's not a trade up, you know, it's it's downgrade. There's for this fun, great, for fun at least. There's this Definitely, great yeah. moment in a not so great movie, but an interesting movie. The did you guys ever see the the Beowulf that Robert Zemeckis did? That was like a CGI oh, animated I movie. Loved it. Yes, with uh, who was the guy that played? Crispin uh, Glover was was Grendel, and then was, Angelina yes. Jolie was the, was Grendel's hot mom. Yes, and but then, then the lead actor was Ray. Uh, was it Ray Winstone who played Ray Winstone? Yes, right, played, Oh, he was okay. so good. So there's this great I moment. There's this really brief moment that st- sticks out to me that I just remembered where like Beowulf is like walking out of the back of a tavern and they're like two, two dudes, you know, and these are guys, these are all like, uh, you know, Celts, old Celts. I think uh, Beowulf, I think is, is it French or is it English? I don't know. So now I'm, I'm embarrassing old, myself, but this is pre- German or something. I think. Yeah. German. Exactly. It's like pre Christianity. Um, but around the time that Christianity is spreading through through the through Europe, and there are these two just like warrior dudes taking a piss, and they're like, "Yeah, they're saying like if you just believe it, this guy is the son of God, you get to live forever in heaven." I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Like, so there's just a sort of like <laughs> you can kind of. It was just a fun moment. Where you're like, right? There's sort of like this. I think it's a commercialism aspect of it. You know, it's right. a way. I think the sword, I think by conquering. And then also like, I don't know, look at all these suburban moms who got into QAnon. There's like a social media aspect to all of this. That's like this stuff gets infectious and takes, you know, takes hold of people. Yeah. That's um, wild. You know, I don't know. And I guess if you're pagan and you see the old ways dying off, you join the club. But I, I'm not a historian. But the other thing is, and what we're going to get into is a lot of the old pagan traditions just got moved into christianity right well and, and it was by we've talked about too, this with so, christmas yeah they they those old pagan sites those sacred sites they were if not demolished a church was built on top exactly. of exactly so they they didn't have much choice if they wanted to continue to gather well, and commune they had to like they really had to adopt this this well, new yes you know religion and part of the way that those people made it palatable was to go sure you can still dress you can still dress up a tree sure right. you can do that if you want to yep. hey the church is going to be right where you worshiped anyway yeah so it's just modernism of you know of of their the religion that they already have i mean most of the christian christian religions that we celebrate are all uh including saint patrick's day is close to a roman holiday um the name escapes me i think it's called lupercalia Let me look it up. I already had it in my notes, but basically like, and it's close to like the spring equinox. Yeah. They were all, they, they, they really appropriated a lot of those pagan rituals and sacred dates and sort of just, you know, um, revamped them up, you know, into this sort of, uh, religiosity. Uh, so yeah, it's wild stuff. 
Yes. Highly anyway. recommend that movie though. I love I remember seeing like a behind the scenes and Ray Winstone's in like one of those early um you know, green polka screen dot costumes. suits, polka dot costumes. And he's like a little, <laughs> oh, he's like a little overweight and he's like on top of this boat. And I'm just, and he's like, but he's just encapsulating sort of this Shakespearean warrior. And you're just like, I was like, what a performance. I mean, the guy is so good. You know, he just really takes on that character of Beowulf and Crispin Glover too. I love that movie. That's great. Um, Marcy, uh, did you get pinched a lot? unfortunately during st patrick's day because I, I would pinch people and then people get mad and i was well, like that's, that's just what my creepy. mom taught me that well, seems like a, a little fetish that's, what, that's a fetish that's a, you got that's a fetish. what my mom taught me you got a fetish your mom's got a fetish you're a freak um <laughs> i would always like if i were wasn't wearing green although green is one of my favorite colors so not hard for me to find green but i have green eyes so i can always kind of get by oh, right, like, right does that count See, you got Irish eyes. They're smiling. How? I, yeah. Of course, we thought you were. You know, and by we, I mean me. <laughs> do you have Do you have any Irish. historical uh, truth to the idea of of where that came from, Michael? Or is that just that's just a modern thing? We I have no idea. Agree. I did not look up what the Irish eyes thing. But there, you right. know, there is no, this the, general. Why, do why people pinch? Yeah. Didn't I didn't look up a lot of St. Patty's stuff. I was focusing on leprechauns, which we're going to get into in the second half. Gotcha. And he's like, it's nothing weird. It's normal. There's nothing to look up. Yeah, there's a, why? Why? It's what my That's mommy. It's thing. what my mommy told me. It's the only way I can come. Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to look up why do we pinch people on St. Patty's Day? Um, and when I'm in love. <laughs> Uh, according to folklore, you get pinched on St. Patrick's Day for not wearing green because green makes you invisible to leprechauns. Now, this did not come up in my research. Oh, see? There you go. <laughs> and leprechauns like to pinch people because they can. So there you go. I guess my mom is my mommy's a leprechaun. Okay. Well, that, well that now makes sense. that makes sense. Okay. Uh, yes. These leprechauns jump and fly through the air, pinching anyone who failed to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. Anyone who practices the pinching tradition and pinches others who aren't wearing green can be ca- compared to the leprechauns. So there you go. <laughs> All you right. know, it's funny because I Googled a lot about leprechauns in St. Patrick's Day and this did not come that up. That shit did come up. So right, I right. am. So I apologize. Or chocolate, I asked. <laughs> um, I've told this story before. Uh, I think I need to tell it again. It's been a long time. Do you guys remember uh, uh, the story I told you about Sean the Leprechaun in my uh, th- uh, in my uh, kindergarten class? I don't recall. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. If you don't remember, then our listeners probably won't either. Marcy, you might enjoy this. So, um, Saint this Saint Saint Patty's Day had a big impact on me because when I was a kindergartner, so we're talking six years old, my teacher Mrs. Lukert sat down about a month before St. Patrick's day and told us that every year a leprechaun comes to visit the classroom on St. Patrick's day. Now, immediately I'm sitting up and I'm also terrified a leprechaun. (laughs) They're real. It's going to come into this classroom. What are you talking about? And I spent nights awake in bed, wondering if this was some kind of hoax or if this was real, I even pictured like the imaginary Mister Luker, uh, mis- like who I had not, I had never met him before. But I, I was like, maybe her husband is going to come by with a puppet and hide behind cabinets and make us think that there's a leprechaun here. <laughs> and she would even go as far as like, we got a letter from Sean today, and then she'd like read us a letter from Sean that was written in on the like the school paper in her hand. Her like, this is how you write handwriting. So I was a little suspicious. But just being like, I can't wait to visit you. I can't wait to come see you. I'm looking forward to St. Patrick's Day, all that kind of stuff. So this was just like built over like four weeks, which is an eternity when you're five or six years old. Sure. Little little McMillan wasn't going to be had, it sounds like. (laughs) Well, but also it just fed into, you know, this is the kid who was waking up every night terrified that E.T. was looking in his window. Like, you know, I, I was aware of all this stuff possibly being real. And I think you part of you was concerned about production value. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. Oh, exactly. I'm like, how are they gonna pull this off? Which <laughs> does kind of feed in feed into what happened. So one day, it's gotta be sometime in March, I walk in the classroom. I'm walk do 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 not from the one moment I'm not thinking about Sean the leprechaun, and I look up. And sitting on top of the cabinet, the the cabinets that lined the classroom, is the fucking 
creepiest looking leprechaun doll you have ever like 1950s elf on the shelf but but scarier leprechaun doll sitting on top of the cabinet i literally stopped in my tracks and dropped my bag and just was like <laughs> oh no and and the first thing that mrs lucard said was sean's here michael and he can <gasps> see you oh, fuck. <laughs> oh my god and i couldn't pay attention for the next two weeks in class all i was doing was focusing on sean and there was a rule the rule was you do not touch sean because if you touch sean he will disappear which made it all the more tempting to try to t- to touch <laughs> Sean. That's amazing. And, like the first elf on the shelf kind of. And every morning, yeah, I guess maybe we're getting into elf on the shelf spoilers here, parents, but every morning we'd walk in, Sean would be sitting in a different location in the room staring off into space, the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. He looked like a really bad, more realistic uh dwarf from um snow white and the seven dwarfs he had that like and he clearly was like made in the 40s or 50s and i remember one time getting up to go sharpen my pencil and looking slowly looking up at him as i was like cranking the wheel of the of the like pencil sharpener and she was in the middle of a lesson and she just stopped the lesson and said he knows you want to touch him, Michael. You can't. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Throw her in prison. She's gross. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, he's watching you. Don't touch him. And I was just like, ran back to my seat. And then uh, Sean, one day, St. Patty's came and went. Sean was gone and he left everybody chocolate coins. And I was like, all right, I'm cool with Sean. He gave me some chocolate. <laughs> but I remember. I remember seeing her years later, like I was, well, not, I mean, I was like as a fourth or fifth grader and being like, Mrs. Lukert, was Sean real? And she was like, what do you think? And I was like, God damn it. Just give me a straight answer. Here. <laughs> but you I do slammed, remember being disappointed. Slammed her up against the lockers and said, just <laughs> yeah. answer me. Kill me. Kill me now. <laughs> you old crazy bitch, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> no more games. <laughs> Yeah, but I was bummed that he didn't move. You know what I mean? So I was like, well, this is probably, but it was just creepy enough that I was like, maybe, maybe it's real. Because if a leprechaun existed, it would definitely fuck with me like this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was that teacher Irish? Who knows? Uh, Lukert sounds German to me. But that's not her name. That's true. So I don't know. I have no idea. She obviously this is thought why this was women a should keep to... their names, though, guys. Yes. yes. So you know whether to trust them or not. Good yeah. point. Good point. <laughs> Bryce Riley, any leprechaun or St. Patty's memories before we go to our break? I actually do have like a very distinct leprechaun memory that my mom loves to bring up. <gasps> no. Uh, which, when I was a little kid on St. Patrick's Day morning. I saw a freaking <gasps> leprechaun and to like, I was so sure I saw it. And in my memory of it, I saw it. This little sparkly little green guy at the end of the hallway. Okay. I can still uh, see it. Bryce. And my mom, I mean, Riley? my mom. Yeah. 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 What yeah, the fuck? Yeah. Why have you told us this story before? I guess I forgot. Um, <laughs> I haven't, it's not like we've been talking about paranormal stuff for like three or four Start years. Start at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, my so my parents were really into St. Patrick's Day, and they would always do the thing where, like, we'd come out of our rooms in the morning, and all the cabinets were open, and the dishes were out, and, like, leprechaun mischief, and, like, I, um, me and my siblings, like, we, like, could not get enough of that. Just, like, loved that. And then, you know, so it was one of those mornings, and, you know, we went into the kitchen. Everything was all in disarray, and then I walked back to the hall, and I saw at the end of the hall this sparkly little green guy really tiny like not like a like you know inches we're talking maybe a little three inch creature and it just kind of like ran (gasps) and then my mom was uh, you know i told her i was like mom i saw one like they were here they were definitely here i saw one at the end of the hall and like i was convinced so i don't know i think it was maybe a you know i have an active imagination and i was leaning into it and i just believed it sure but but man but it was a, it's a pretty little magical little memory and i appreciate that my parents put in that kind of effort to like create 
magic for the kids. It was pretty great. Yeah, that's true. Also, trippy. what we know about tulpas. I was they... going to say, Marcy, that mm-hmm. sounds like some tulpa magic shit to yeah. me. That mm-hmm. that yeah. could have been that that seed and planted in you and then you created it. Yeah, especially in the mind of a child who's like uh, believing it. And know? with everyone in the family partaking in the ritual. Yeah. You yeah. know, because like your mom and dad getting up every morning and like setting shit up and being like the leprechaun did it and all the kids buying into it. You know what I mean? Like that is a yeah. family participating <laughs> in an occult ritual. This is it's, why like, I like that you said every morning. Like, can you imagine if they did that every morning? Well, that's what I thought. Well, the, I mean, the elf, the elf on no, the shelf. Not Riley. The elf on the shelf <laughs> shits the like that. Back, little one. <laughs> the elf on the shelf shits like that. You know what I mean? I thought you meant like leading up to St. Patty's. They were doing no, no, that. No, no, no. This is a one day affair. But even if you did it year yeah. after year, you would know yes. that that's coming up. And it was, yeah. And if poltergeists could be explained by, um, you know, juvenile children's hormones and emotions, then why do we think it only has to be like banging cabinets? Why couldn't it be something else too? That's that, a good like, point. Yep. You guys yeah. manifested a tiny little leprechaun, Riley. That's Aww. trippy, dude. What did so cool. when you say it was green and gl- sparkly? Are you thinking like Tinkerbell, like it glowed from head to toe, or was it anthropomorphic? Could you yeah. see it as like human esque and only in three inch form? It was small and at the end of the hall and far away. And I think I mostly it was green, sparkly kind of yeah, like a Tinkerbell uh, kind of fairy uh, vibe. Not a lot of detail. Did you see? You know? But did, could you make out like heads, arms, sh- legs? Or just I a mean, light. at this point, it's conjecture, right? I was like probably four or five, like Bryce, so. It's hard I mean, to Riley, you brought hard this to up. say. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I'm just saying you're prying for detail if you of like want a memory. A hypnotist, this... <laughs> I can get you a hypnotist. This is the thing. This, should we regress me for yeah. leprechaun? Yeah. I think you got to get regressed, dude. <laughs> Let's Remember, do you're it. dealing with six-year-old Michael, too, at this point. Riley, tell me more about that fucking leprechaun. <laughs> yeah. I need to what know. Did we you know? son of a bitch. <laughs> um, we're going to move on, but before we do, it's been a minute, and we have an updated list, so I Ooh. thought, why not? Marcy Jaro, let's play Bullshit or Believe It. Ooh. All right, you remember this game. I'm going to go down a rapid list of phenomena, and you're going to say... Bullshit if you're not open to it. Believe it if you are. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you have to come down on one side. Okay. Ready? Okay. Marcy, on your mark. Get set. Ghosts. Bullshit. No, I mean believe it. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> UFOs. Uh, believe it. Bigfoot. Believe it. ESP. Believe it. Shadow people. Believe it. Unicorns. Bullshit. Alien abductions. Believe. Yeti. Believe. Mothman. Believe it. Out of body experiences. Believe it. Tarot cards. Believe it. Demonically possessed dolls. Believe it. Healing power of crystals. Believe it. An alien spacecraft crashed at Roswell. Believe it. Loch Ness Monster. Mm, Believe it. (laughs) Atlantis. Believe it. Haunted houses. Believe. Skunk ape. Believe, yes, that's my friend. We're from the South. <laughs> the Jersey Devil. Believe it. The Biblical Devil. Bull. It's weird that I'm going to say bullshit, but I will. <laughs> Speaking to the dead. Believe it. Mermaids. Mm, bullshit. The government is hiding the truth about Sasquatch. Oh, Mm. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Past lives. Believe it. Life on other planets. Believe it. Life after death. Believe it. Or Damn, hopefully prof- not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Professionally well done. done. Yes, well done. I don't believe in mermaids. Only in the way that they are described as like a big titted lady. Like that's, I don't believe right. in that part. I don't think Starbucks has it correct. You don't but... think that fish has tits? <laughs> no, no, no. Again, I've said it before in your podcast. Those were sailors who thought manatees were sexual. Um, <laughs> but I think there could be something that is more humanoid down deep below but i probably more like an alien or something you know what mm. I mean? yeah 
I do. I like I know that. exactly what you mean. I, like I mean, that. or like a water spirit, you know, like an elemental. I believe in a water spirit. I just watched Barb and Star uh, go to oh my God. Vista Del Mar. So. so great. Wasn't it so fun? Guys, yeah. watch I that movie. Seen it. I got to oh, watch it. It's I don't know that so is. stupid and fun. It's uh, um, Kristen Wiig and her writing partner. Oh, I cannot remember her writing partner's name, I'll which is a shame because she's so either. good in it. She's very they good wrote. In it. You know, they wrote Bridesmaids together, um, but they wrote this and it's not like Bridesmaids at all. It's so much sillier and fun and it's so stupid and fun. And I normally don't like movies like that, but it's a real it harkens back to the 90s era. Yeah, like Austin Powers or yeah. even like some of the really, airplane movies, yeah. just really silly, absurd kind of. Oh, it's great! Uh, it's it's really fun. Um, but there's uh, Annie, a water, uh, Annie a water spirit in that. Too. Yes, Annie. Yes, um, great water spirit in that movie. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Exactly. It's really and a talking crab that's pretty great as well. Oh gosh, it's so good. What is the title of this movie again? Barb and uh, Star go to Vista Del Mar. All right, that's you got to watch it. It's great. It's a great. Uh, it, it really took. It's one of those that like. It's on Amazon Prime, but it's a it's like one of those like movie price rentals where they jack up the price because they're like you would have bought movie tickets for this if you're the whole family's watching. So it's like a twenty dollar rental, but I will say if you compare that to what it would take for you and a friend to go out to see a movie or your wife or girlfriend, totally worth it. And it's it's like it's like pay per view prices, yeah. but it was very fun. I watched it alone, and I have no regrets. It was super Me fun. Me too. Oh, we should have watched it together, Marcy, over <sighs> over over text or Zoom. I just sit outside your window like I do every night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, it's finally time for leprechauns. <laughs> All right, we're back. It's time for High Strangeness. I just want to interrupt because as we were talking right before break, a uh, friend of the show, Dave Keith, texted me out of the blue. You know what would be cool? A Linda Moulton Howe biopic movie about cow mutilations. Kind of an Aaron Brockovich type of flick, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. <laughs> oh, my God. Dave, I so love where your head's at. Also, copyright W. Dave Keith. Don't steal that idea. But what? A, what? I mean, these are my friends this is why you know, this is why i have really this good. podcast <laughs> that is something that i don't know that i've put a lot of uh brain power thinking about cattle mutilations yeah it's uh, not a subject for everyone i got a book for you <laughs> As Bryce has discovered on the show. Um, uh, I got a book for you. It's called The 37th Parallel. Uh, it's 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 fucking crazy. That stuff is wild. And it, especially in the 70s, it was going on a lot in the Southwest and nobody had an answer of why it was happening. If it was the government, if it was like aliens, nobody knew. But it Coyotes. Like, now that you said Southwest, I'm like, that's coyote. Yeah. Yeah. And Linda no, Moulton no, no, Howell no. is sort of this this boots on the ground investigative journalist. She's been doing this for decades and uh, she's cut her teeth before a lot of these, you know, uh, researchers have ever even gotten started. And so she's just she's at the top of her class. We're lo- I really like her. But. Marcy, we're talking horses <laughs> and cattle that are like half skinned to the bone with laser sharp precision huh. and other animals exsanguinated cowering. no blood yeah. no blood yeah. no footprints leading up to the animal or back and the other livestock are cowering in fear when these ranchers oh. find it it's devastating and it looks like they've been dropped too like so there's this there's evidence of them like dropping from extreme heights it, it's like devastating. landing in the place where they do it's it's it was devastating to the ranchers because it happened yeah. to like horses and pets right. that they had and 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 to cattle that were their like their 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 living you know their livelihood and and they were yeah. losing like tens of thousands of dollars sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars on these attacks and nobody knew what the fuck was going on they couldn't get any answers from anybody it's wild stuff yeah she's convinced it's aliens you know that's uh 
upsetting. Ugh. Yeah, it's yeah. and she doesn't have any. Linda Moulton Howe is in Thirty Seventh Parallel. That's Ben Mesrich, the guy who wrote uh, the 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 book that social the Social Network was based on. But um, it's it gets into it and it's really fascinating stuff. Well, but. I'll read that when you read Attach, the new science of adult attachment and how it can help you find and keep love. Great, I'm down for it. Let's do it. <laughs> book club. All right, everybody, here we go. It's time for leprechauns. And this week's story of high strangeness. In Carlington, County Louth, Ireland, there's a pub that's beloved by locals and visitors alike, known as PJ O'Hare's, named after its owner. In 1909, O'Hare cl- claimed that he was working in his garden when he heard a scream coming from up on Slefoy Mountain. The publican followed the noise up the mountainside where he came across a set of little green clothes next to a pile of bones scattered across scorched earth. In the pocket of the clothing, he claims he found a little coin purse in which he discovered four golden coins. Hmm. There could be no doubt that what P.J. O'Hare had found were the remains of a leprechaun. O'Hare put the remains and coins on display in his pub, but very few people believed his story. One of those non-believers was a man who went by the name McCoy- M- McCoilty, but was it's hard to read and hard to say, but was later revealed as Kevin Woods. At first, Woods claimed he didn't believe in leprechauns, but the story intrigued him. So Woods then began the annual Carlingford leprechaun hunt. Carlington lepre wait a minute. Pause. Don't delete this. I'm going to make sure I've got the name of this town right because I've spelled it. It's Carlingford, not Carlington. Okay, thank you. Apologies, Ireland. So he began the annual Carlingford Carlingford leprechaun hunt, hiding ceramic leprechauns containing thousands of pounds in the hillsides for people to find. So he basically stashed away 5,000 pounds in like five different uh, ceramic leprechauns. Sounds fun. And, yeah, and let people come find him because he was like, "Wow, oh, this is a cool story my buddy told me. And if there really are leprechauns up here, maybe people will find him. And if not, we'll we'll pay back to the community." So after his friend PJ died, the gold coins on display at the pub disappeared. In 2003, Woods was repairing his wall in Carling- Carlingford when he found a purse along with the four pieces of gold buried amongst stones along with a note from PJ. He had bequeathed the gold coins to Woods. Shortly thereafter, Woods claims he was walking his dog in the hills when he came upon three leprechauns, little men about one feet one foot tall, sitting on a rock. Woods became transfixed and unable to speak. He and his dog both watched, frozen, as the leprechauns gabbed and chatted, but he was unable to hear them. After a minute passed, the little men disappeared under the rock, and Woods and his dog were able to move again. He returned home a half hour later, where his wife alerted him that he'd been missing for hours. Wow. Woods thought it was noon, but it was clearly but it was nearly 7 p.m. Not too long after this strange encounter, Woods claimed he began making contact with the elder leprechaun named Kerrig. Through, through out-of-body experiences. Kerrig informed Woods that there were only 236 leprechauns left in Ireland. As a result, Woods and a team of people were able to protect the land surrounding Sleefoy, Sleefoy by the Irish government under the Biodiversity Protection Clauses. So he protected those leprechauns from development and... Uh, and other other human, uh, 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 you know, uh, trespassing. Sort of like they do in Iceland. Yes, exactly. This is a very similar story to the elves in Iceland. So since then, Woods was granted permission by Kerrig, the elder leprechaun, to excavate an underground fairy cavern, which, according to Kerrig, gave him the specifics in order to make it safe for the public and children to come enjoy. According to Woods, the leprechauns move about Ireland through the use of underground caves and caverns and tunnels where they mine for gold. 
Hmm. He believes that each of the four gold coins granted to him by PJ grants him one gift. The first gift was being able to communicate with the leprechauns. The other three gifts he hasn't disclosed. He keeps the location of his coins secret and says that he must pass them down to his eldest son within three hours of his death or the gold will return to the leprechauns. So this story I came across, I really, really love it. And of course sounds, oh, this is like a, this is like a wacky man who is like trying to bring tourism to his town. But I found a video, which I'll put up in the show notes of him on YouTube. Uh, and it was just really lovely because this guy sounds so grounded. It's like a six minute video. We won't play it here, but like, this guy sounds so calm, cool, grounded, and collected. And I'm like, I wish he was my dad. This guy sounds awesome. And I believe every fucking word that he says. Even if he's making this up to make children happy, I believe every fucking word that he says. You know? Because if you look at the at the, the clothing that's still on display and the bones, uh, eh, you know, I don't know. But I believe in leprechauns when I hear this guy talk about them. Are leprechauns all male? Good question. Yes, Marcy. They are all male. There are not any known female leprechauns. Um, Why this is, we don't know. But I'm about to teach you a little bit about leprechauns. Okay, I'm getting ahead. Okay. Okay. But here we go. Leprechauns are categorized as solitary fairies, mostly known as loners, who rarely squat up. Solitary fairies may be those that were banished from fairy courts due to mischief-making or misdemeanors, but mainly, a solitary fae is a spirit who wants to avoid human contact altogether. They are small beings, usually a little old man, who are thin, about a foot tall, but way stronger than they appear. Like Ant-Man, they have the ability to knock out foes many times their size. Hmm. They dwell in the counties of Ireland, beneath hedges and in hollow trees, but they originated from mountains and caves, specifically from the mountains of Ben Bolben. They feed on herbed soda bread, mushrooms, meat, tasty stews, and fruit pies. But uh, don't stereotype these leprechauns, because guess what? They hate potatoes. Hmm. Traditionally, leprechauns are depicted as wearing shamrock green tunics, trousers, but in, t- in trousers, but in the old stories, leprechauns actually wore red, and instead of wide brim top hats you see often associated with St. Patrick's Day celebrations, or the Notre Dame mascot or the lucky or lucky from Lucky Charms who wear derbies, the actual real leprechaun hat of choice is a tri-corner hat which represents the ancient triple Irish goddess, goddesses Eriu, Banba, and Fotla. Another leprechaun-style staple? Shoe buckles, baby! <laughs> they dress like pilgrims. The green leprechaun attire is more of a modern invention and probably comes out of a practice called stage Irish or paddywhackery which was the act of stereotyping the Irish in plays and stories in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Elizabethan dress was still common in Ireland well into the 19th century, which is fascinating. And a lot of Irish-American immigrants dressed in very old-fashioned clothing. The color green is associated with Ireland since the early 17th century. And of course, you have the shamrock, which is a symbol associated with St. Patrick, like we discussed. Um, the feast, uh, the feast of St. Patrick or St. Patrick's Day is a national holiday in Ireland, which celebrates Christianity overtaking paganism in Ireland. So Marcy, do you know what a leprechaun's trade is? His day job? Who? Um, I take um, a guess. It's a wild guess. It's okay if you're wrong. Okay. He, um, you know, does Plumbing. I don't know. <laughs> I want to guess. Cobbling shoes. Shoe Bri- repair. Bryce, you win the prize. Marcy, you Bryce. were close because it's, you know, it's a working man's trade. <laughs> uh, cobblery and shoe repair, primarily wow. working for the Dowing Shi, a race of elves. But when it comes to working for humans, 
Good luck getting them to repair more than one single shoe. <laughs> they are better known for hoarding gold and guarding the riches of Taltha Dedanen and elven treasures or the plunder left behind from evading armadas and foreign armies. The Taltha de Danan, or Tribe of Danu, were a race of superpowered beings that ruled ancient Ireland over 4,000 years ago. You ready for this, Bryce? Yeah. They ascended from sky ships covered in dark clouds. Ain't that a bitch. <laughs> so apparently they were like, it's like Marvel Comics, The Eternals. They were just like this race of super, super beings that came from the skies and ruled Ireland uh, for a while. And then like the leprechauns were like, hey, we're going to guard all these treasures that they came across. So like all the gold that they have is left over from these actual Marvel Comics superheroes that ruled Ireland back in the day. So strange. There's a lot of like UFO stuff here, I feel like, you know, yeah. especially with the missing time that we talked about. I mean, this is like this is like Jacques Vallée, pa Passport to Magonia. All it's got it all 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 over this mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. So here we go. I'm going to butcher some stuff here. The name Leprechaun probably comes from Leithbrogen, meaning shoemaker. But the root words of the name can be traced back to Lupercy and the uh, and the associated Roman festival of Lupercalia or Lupercalia, which is in mid February. And elements of Roman tradition certainly have certainly weaseled their way into the Roman Catholic Church, which, of course, was predominant in Ireland. Leprechauns can also be traced back to 8th century legends of the Luchorpan, little person, who were creepy water spirits. Mm. Marcy, you've talked about water babies and water spirits on A Funny Feeling. I've heard you mention them a few times. Yeah, they are scary. Mm-hmm. And perhaps the earliest written reference to leprechauns comes from the ancient legend Extra Fergus Macleti, The Adventures of Fergus, Son of Leti, a story about the old king of Ulster. During one episode, he falls asleep on the beach, and three Letrapan try dragging him down into the waters. Yeah. Leprechauns are tricksters and merry pranksters who love pulling a fast one over greedy humans and lurking thieves searching for crocs of leprechaun gold. Each leprechaun has a cock... Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you were right, Marth. Yeah, all, right. all, all men. All men. <laughs> <laughs> Each leprechaun has a crock of gold for themselves, and humans <laughs> tend to search for them after being al alerted to the sound of the leprechaun's hammer, or perhaps spotting a rainbow, which, as we all know, always leads to the location of leprechaun gold. When it comes to leprechaun encounters, there are a few things to keep in mind. Anybody want to shoot me some leprechaun rules here? Uh, Don't try don't. to catch one? Yeah, they'll bite you. <laughs> <laughs> Hands off their gold. Right, that's good, yeah. Well, actually, you can catch them. And uh, I'm going to tell you what to do if, if you do catch one. If you spot a leprechaun first without him seeing you, then the little man, uh, once he's aware of you, may regale you with legends and tall tales and sing you merry songs. Okay. And if you're lucky enough to grab a hold and catch that leprechaun, here's what you do. You must keep your eye on him at all times. Don't even blink or the creature may vanish mm. leprechauns always carry purses of coins with them one type is a purse that contains a single magic silver coin that will replenish itself I want no matter coin. how many times you spend it ka-ching ka <laughs> the other purse contains gold which the leprechaun may offer you to buy its freedom but while you're sitting there counting your riches, the leprechaun will dash away and the gold will turn to ashes or dead leaves. Hmm. Other folk tales, like the one that inspired Darby O'Gill and the Little People, uh, which is a movie that I just rewatched last night. Have you guys ever seen that movie? No. Mm -mm. It's a Disney movie mm. from 1959, live action. It's an early mm. Sean Connery movie. Um, it also features a banshee, which 
terrified me as a little boy. But um, it's a pretty good movie. It's slow compared to today's pace, but um, I love it. It's got that like early Disneyland aesthetic to it. And it's actually kind of fun and enjoyable. Um, so uh, if you catch the, the they play on this folktale that if you catch a leprechaun, he will grant you three wishes. And that's kind right. of the base of that story. Um, and 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 uh, he meets the he catches the king of the leprechauns. Darby O'Gill is like this old, old, old dude in this little Irish village. And then um, uh, the leprechaun always finds weird ways to wriggle out of the deal. So, um, you know, so if you get that gold and it turns to ashes or dead leaves, as Bryce would say, you just got got by a leprechaun. You got got, bro. homie. <laughs> you know, that's interesting, too, because it, it sort of reminds me of those like like fairy cakes or or, you know, uh, alien banquets. Right. Where you feel like you have all this food, this this beautiful laden food. But when when you come out of the of the trance or whatever, it's really just foisome. It's, it's, it's like dead leaves. It's ash. It's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, yep. not what, yep. it's not what it's perceived. Well, those leprechauns are just fairy cousins. You yep. know? Yeah. Just, yeah. So. You're right. They are considered fey. They are considered part of the fey folks. So they're okay. like, when we did the elves episode, you know, and elves are just or an old term for fairy as well. So, they're all part of these Celtic invisible spirits. That's the other thing is like they can shape shift. They can turn invisible. Um, they can appear however they want to, to you. They can talk to you in your dreams. Uh, you know, Kevin Wood says that like he communicates with them on the astral plane. So hmm. these are like the hidden people. They're the, the, they're, they're the fey folk. They're not just these little corporeal beings. They might be the same stuff that you're discovering Bigfoot is on Expedition Bigfoot. You know what I mean? Sure. It's weird interdimensional uh, ultra terrestrial trickery. So if a leprechaun spots you first, you could become the victim of all sorts of trickster magic. He could transform you into an animal of his choosing uh Oh, or no. various other uncanny uh, items, <laughs> like a lamp, maybe. I don't know. Um, they can, He could even teleport you to an unknown location where you get lost. So to avoid any shenanigans, offer a leprechaun a pinch of snuff or some tobacco for its pipe, and everything yes. should be good. And yeah, this, this is like... Will this weed also, work? I think weed would probably work. Okay. I do. I think anything that they can smoke. And this really made me think that I should start carrying some cigarettes or weed or pipe tobacco when I go hiking, just in case I run into a member of the Fae. And I also feel like when we talked about elves again, like offering them cakes and breads are good as well. So yeah. maybe pack some wow. little Debbie's. You got to you bring go. your soda bread. <laughs> yeah. Little. Get some. Yeah, but like some Twinkies, I think might be good. I just Honestly. imagine Michael like meeting some girl on a hike, and as he's like emptying his pockets, got little Debbies and some tobacco snuff. And what's that for? Oh, uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Listen, well, we'll cross offering. that bridge when it comes. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when his gold cock shows up. All right. <laughs> Every leprechaun has a cock. That's all I know. A big gold cock. We'll just we'll ask me about it later. Okay. I'm looking for a leprechaun's cock, okay? Why? <laughs> I just, like, I'm less interested in the day than I am finding a leprechaun cock, all right? And, and this is why one... I want him to read, to find out what his attachment style is, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just all I know is if you find a leprechaun cock, do not take your eyes off it. Don't even blink. <laughs> it could disappear. <laughs> And also, oh. isn't it like I also thought like it's funny how the tradition of offering uh, like spirit creatures treats translates into things like E.T. And like if you think back to E.T., how did Elliot get E.T.'s trust? Reese's Pieces. Yeah, yeah he fed him <clears throat> candy. Yep. yep. So I think you always got to have candy close by in case you meet one of these interdimensional beings like the rules tell you hyper ultra terrestrials they like sweets yeah. maybe part of the reason that they come here guys i'm about to go into it like 
they like taking pleasure in the the things that like you can only get in this dimension yeah right Mm. you know like sugar sweets and like sexy stuff you know what i mean like (laughs) like they're big gold cogs guys let me tell you something I have been at home for a year. Okay. My sexual imagination is branching out. Let me tell you that right now. Sexy stuff. Sexy stuff. We are here for the sexy stuff. (laughs) Also, the Doritos Taco Bell tacos. But for the sexy stuff. We like all the Yum Brands food chains. This has just made me imagine that Michael is having like an American pie moment at home, but with candies. I stare at the ceiling and there's like a naked leprechaun with like 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 with Skittles showering down on me. Just busting a nut at an old tiny old man. Oh, um, man. So one story of a leprechaun sighting comes from 1908 in Westmeath. And I've got the original publication. Uh, this comes from the Irish Post, uh, the website. I'm just going to read you the story. It says, in 1908, various reports coming from the Westmeath area became so frequent that they were deemed newsworthy. Below is a clipping from one titled A Strange Westmeath Report, which reads, A North Westmeath, especially Delvin district, an odd story was told on Friday. It runs that a strange creature has been observed for some days in the district of Kilok, which is between Kulakan and Delvin. Several persons, mostly children from the school, are reported to have seen it, and they describe it as a little creature resembling a man of dwarfish proportions, clad in a red jacket and suit in the traditional description of a leprechaun. The most peculiar thing about the matter is that it is stated that as soon as one of the school children called the attention of a comrade to the creature, the informant ceased to see it, whilst the informed could clearly observe it. The reported appearance has caused much conjecture and not a little excitement in the district. Many are inclined to regard the creature as a monkey escaped from the from the care of some traveling organ grinder and if it can be observed at close quarters it may be proved to be such however the more fanciful are inclined to invest it with a far more mysterious and uncanny character the thing that jumps out to me about this story um, Bryce Riley I think you'll pick up on this as well is that the observer could still see it even when they pointed it out to the person they were trying to get it to show even when the person they were trying to show it to could not. Yeah. Yep. Right. I've had this problem when I saw a fucking ghost, me and my friend could see the ghost. When we try to show it to a third friend, they could not, they couldn't see anything. The stuff happens. It's weird. It's got this weird I psychological mean, effect. Some people are colorblind. That's true. Not everyone's brain. is processing at the same level you don't you got to get that sweet uh pineal dmt juice flowing right bryce Mm. yeah that makes sense to me so uh one of the more recent leprechaun encounter stories riley i want you to get ready we're gonna play this for uh the crew here and um Mm -hmm. i think most of you will remember this one it occurred in the mid-aughts and became one of the very first viral youtube videos uh, on March seventeenth, I, I love this. Sorry, <laughs> two thousand six, NBC fifteen news out of Mobile, Alabama, reported a story about a leprechaun causing mischief in the neighborhood of Crichton. According to the report, crowds had been gathering under a local tree where a leprechaun was allegedly seen two nights earlier, hoping to get a glimpse of the creature and maybe find its crock of gold. Riley, play us that clip. Well, just in time for St. Patrick's Day, crowds are coming by the dozens to get an up-close view at what some say is a piece of Irish folk- folklore. Some people in the Crichton area of Mobile say a leprechaun has taken up residence in their neighborhood. A leprechaun. NBC 15's <laughs> Brian Johnson has more. 
Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community. Many of you bring binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looks like a level car to me. I got to do look up in the tree. Who else in the level car and say yay? Yeah! <laughs> Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. If you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. <laughs> this amateur sketch resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is this casting a shadow from the other limb. Could be a crackhead. <laughs> got hold to the wrong stuff. Ah. I told him to get up in a tree and play a leprechaun. We don't get down to the bottom of this. You got to stay on there, guy. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. This guy helping to direct traffic this says guy. he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. This war is all spells right here. This is a special leprechaun flute, which has been passed down from thousands of years ago from my great-great-grandfather, who was Irish. I just came to help out. Others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm going to run a back hole and uproot that tree. I want to know where the gold is. I want the gold. Give me the gold. I want the gold. This is Brian Johnson, NBC 15 News. That's great. Right there, Riley. I just... Oh, man. The, the, the thing that I love about this video is just the pure joy of uh-huh. every single person interviewed, right? Like everyone is in on the excitement. And I think that's what's so wonderful about, about the video, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just everybody gathering together like, yeah. there's a fucking leprechaun. Let's get down there. Yeah. Tim being like, y'all seen a leprechaun? Say hey. And everyone screams. It's like the fucking best marcy do you remember where you were when you saw saw this yeah i was in new york but i just remember <laughs> loving it so much uh and i just texted you guys there's a gif of when the guy <laughs> when the guy makes everyone scream uh, <laughs> that's the gif of it that i just texted you guys yes and then no. the amateur sketch is so so good it's funny. the greatest <laughs> <laughs> talk about the amateur sketch and all this will be on instagram so you can see all this stuff it's just like <laughs> an amateur. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a... <laughs> it's nothing. It's just nothing. It's just... it's a blank face <laughs> with two eyes and like a leprechaun hat. It's so good. <laughs> it's still good after like 15 years. Uh, wow. I just love how excited everyone was. I know. Too. It's so great. Like everyone is having such a good time. And the they guy the- with with the uh, leprechaun pipe with the with the pipe, it's just a pipe that he drilled holes <laughs> into. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say they caught the night stalker the same way. The whole community <laughs> gathered around. Like, we got him. We got him cornered. That's true. Um, So, uh, you know, I mean, we can't really say anything about this video that hasn't already been said. It was, you know, like Tosh, you know, point oh was all over it and Key and Peele. Um, But in 2014, years after the report struck Comedy Gold, local radio DJs Bob Sturm and Daniel McDowell out of Dallas, hosts of Bob and uh, the Bob and Dan show made a field trip to Crichton where they did a report and interviewed locals who revealed that the true identity of the leprechaun was a local dwarf named Sean, who was just (laughs) pulling a prank on everybody. Sean the leprechaun? Oh, my God. It comes full circle. (laughs) Whoa. He went by a more derogatory nickname that I won't uh, mention, (laughs) another term for little people that's gone out of fashion, so you you can look it up, but he was called, but his name was Sean, and I just, I love that it came full circle, and he basically one night decided to dress like a leprechaun, climb in a tree, and then tell his friends to let everybody know there was a leprechaun in the tree. Oh my God. Bless this man. What a sweet man. (laughs) I know. Yeah, so you can you can look all that stuff up and find out more information about it. It's very very enjoyable. Uh, uh, so the the Crichton Leprechaun and Sean the Leprechaun may not have been the real deal, but that doesn't mean these Fey folk are all fiction. I suggest that tonight 
ye club scouts, as you dream of warmer days ahead and maskless days, hopefully, make a wish to astral project yourself into the realm of the leprechauns. Who knows? Maybe you'll be lucky enough to strike gold on this St. Paddy's Day. This is Michael McMillan reporting for BCC News. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got on leprechauns. Um, no answer to why they're all male. Some people don't, you know, they're like part of the mystery is like, where do they come from? How do they have their firstborn sons? Yeah. I don't know. You we know what? They could just have spores and make a baby, I guess. I think they do like hatch out of like eggs or something. You know, maybe there was a queen leprechaun <laughs> that gave birth to all of them. I don't know. <laughs> She's not getting in on the action. But uh, there you go. There you have it. Well done. Well done, sir. What do you think, Marcy? What the <laughs> hell are leprechauns? Do you think they're real? Do you think I... uh, they're like elementals? What do we think? Here's the thing. You just never hear of people seeing them besides Riley. Besides what Kevin Woods and Riley. <laughs> yeah, you never hear about people seeing them. Well, maybe we don't, but um, you know, it's like like you said, like in Iceland, it well, you those know, like are I not do think they're leprechauns now, well, are they? Fair enough, but they're kind of related. So I'm saying maybe more but, locals see them. I just I but you know I've heard people see fairies I've like you've heard, you hear stories about not as much but you know there are cultures that believe in them and like truly like not just like oh it's fun to believe this but I just really never hear I've never Riley you're a liar I've never heard of anyone <laughs> <laughs> I just never hear those stories I wish I would I just picturing five year old me being told that I'm a liar by you. <laughs> by grown up Marcy. I'm it's right. Real. I'm right it's in your real. face. I'm right it. in your face. My nose You're is touching liar. your nose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're a fucking liar. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. Who knew I that I this St. Patty's Day celebration <laughs> would end with a brutal takedown of Riley by Marcy? But also, Look, most St. He... Patrick's Day celebrations end in, in a pretty dark kind of. But also, and... what Riley described is sort of more of like what you imagine of the 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 fairies, like the the mm-hmm. pixie fairies too, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it was that yeah. size. Because leprechauns are bigger, right? They're about a foot tall, but they can also appear to you however they want. It could be a baby. It could be a baby. Bryce, what do you think? Yeah, <clears throat> I think um... Bryce fell asleep. <laughs> he did. <laughs> what? Huh? Well, uh, absolutely. Uh, and then the Bigfoot is. Uh... <laughs> yeah, man. Look, I think they're they're real for the time and place that they're seen. Right. So. Um, who am I to say leprechauns aren't real? I think they are nice. part of the fairy world, part of those elemental type things. And I think it's all part of the same stuff, man. Leprechaun, tomato, tomato, elf, fairy, leprechaun, all the same yeah. shit. Who knows? Yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah. Well, thank I, you, Marcy. I, just, I want oh. more stories of leprechauns. That's all. I'm just Great. demanding more... it from your audience. Great. If you've seen a leprechaun, please write to us at Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com, uh, and we will share that story in an upcoming L Files episode. And if we do get them, then we'll bring Marcy back to read those stories. So there you go, guys. You've been assigned some homework. Now get to it. Go find a <laughs> leprechaun. Marcy, Jaro, thank you so much for being on the show. We love you. Thank you for having me. This is a blast. Uh, tell people where to find you and what yeah. you're working on. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm working on a, watching a lot of 90 Day Fiance and spinoffs. Oh so check me out on Patreon on 90 Day Bay. It's me and Nicole Byer talking about some of the worst people on earth. Um, and then... <laughs> I have another podcast called Kardashian It with Jessica Jordan. It's about all things Kardashian, and we all know they're coming to an end. So it is the 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 death rattle of the Kardashians. <laughs> Come check that out. They premiere this week, guys. So tomorrow when you're hearing this. Well, um, and I've been on an episode of that show, so absolutely. maybe start there. Oh boy, yes. Oh, and check it what- out. And then um, the last one is a funny feeling. We're the sisters uh, of of these guys. So just me and Betsy Sadaro listening and reading spooky stories. We used to have guests, but then we got very lazy. 
That's fine. I mean, <laughs> we're just bringing friends back. <laughs> we're, we've been a <laughs> pandemic. Please hang out with yeah, us. Yeah, we're just like, okay, we just need to get some of our old friends. Guys, listen, don't worry. We do have new guests coming up, and I'm just saying we get it. Um, but also, if you listen to this show and you don't listen to A Funny Feeling, what the fuck are you doing? It really Agreed. is. Uh, I mean, it's a funnier show than we are, <laughs> number one. So definitely funnier. Yeah. <laughs> listen for that. <laughs> But um, you guys have so many great ghost stories, so many great listener stories. We so. have. That's why we this whole pandemic have been doing listener stories, because I just had hundreds, yeah. hundreds in the backlog. So I was like, why don't we just focus on that for a while? And we're still not even near caught up. It's a great show. Clear, and Betsy honestly. Sidaro is the most lovable human uh, our listeners love betsy she does every christmas episode with us i wanted to get you in for a holiday episode for that purpose because we need to spend the holidays with our sisters you know what i'm saying yeah mm-hmm. um great so check that out do us a favor if you would uh go to apple Podcasts. give us a five-star review if you do we'll read it here on the air like this one 10 out of 10 cheeseburgers five stars by kenzie bow this is my favorite podcast. Michael, Bryce, and Riley are fantastic hosts. The stories they tell are well-researched, spooky, and so, so, so fun. The Bigfoot boys keep things silly and lighthearted while also being able to seriously discuss aspects of high strangeness. Keep up the spooky work, boys. Kisses. Thank you. Aww, lovely. Love yeah, follow us. Makes you feel good. I yeah. know. And obviously, Kenzie, you're a uh, Patreon listener, so and supporter. We appreciate that. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. Join us over at the other side. Follow us on Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club and on Twitter at Bigfoot Pod. Boys, before we go, anything to plug? I'll plug my game if you like drawing dirty pictures and covering them up. It's like Cards Against Humanity and Pictionary Had a Dirty Baby. It's called <laughs> Dirty Picture Cover Up, and you can get it at the dpcugame.com. And a link to that will be in the show notes. Riley, go. Bryce's game is so good that I'm going to use my plug for that because it is truly, and I've said this before, but I stand by it. The most fun I've had playing a board game. Oh, thanks, man. So that's my plug. Buy Bryce's game. It's so good. There you go. All right. Thanks again to Marcy. Marcy, we love you. Say goodbye to our friends. Bye. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next week with an all-new episode. Until then, good night. And go get regressed. Oh, dog. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month.